we're going to pick up the thread where we left off now. We're, we're going to talk about the great philosophers again today. Now, I know you've, had, you, you, you've read a book, a new book, prior to the meetings this week. Oh, wait a minute, I taught long enough to know I should put it like this. You've had in your possession a new book <laughs> prior to the meetings this week. Ram Charan and, and Larry Bossidy's new book. Uh, Ram mentions philosophy three times in the book. Did you notice that? Page 6, page 8, page 129. Slightly dismissively, what's he talking? What is he, what is he, what is he labeling philosophy in those passages? Empty theory, abstract gassing, ruminations untethered to reality. Is that philosophy? That's bad philosophy. Good philosophy gives us ideas we can use. And as a matter of fact, Rahm's book is a very philosophical book. It's one of the most philosophical business books in many years. Um, that paradigmatic, preeminent philosophical concept, reality. Remember, remember Plato? Does anybody remember from college Plato's cave? We're, we're, we're all like people, prisoners chained in a cave, uh, facing a wall, seeing shadows dance across the wall, mistaking those shadows as realities. It, the philosopher is the person who breaks his chain, gets, gets out of the cave, sees reality in the clear sunlight, and then returns into the cave to free his fellow prisoners. The concept of reality, the word reality, you know how many times it occurs in Rahm's book? Who counted the number of times? 65 times. The word reality and its close derivatives occurs over 65 times in Rom's book. Not normal for a business book. Rom's book is a Socratic book. Did anybody notice that? Socratic questioning, all through it. Socratic dialogue, all through it. Penetrating beneath the illusions that dominate our lives and, and grasping onto the realities that lie beneath. Then holding people accountable to those realities. You'll see these themes all through Rom's book. And I want to tell you something. Socratic management, Socratic leadership, Socratic questioning, Socratic dialogue, extremely important. Extremely important. But not the whole picture of individual success, corporate excellence, and personal commitment. In fact, I've come to think that Socrates had about half the picture, half the big picture of sustainable excellence and ultimate commitment. Socrates thought he had the whole picture. Socrates was a great philosopher, but all the great philosophers were wrong about something. Socrates thought he had the whole picture. How did that work out for Socrates? Does, everybody, does anybody know? How did that turn out for Socrates, thinking he had the whole picture there? With questioning, with dialogue, with holding people accountable. How did that work out? Well, well let me ask you this. What's the title of uh, Rahm's book? Execution. Yeah, absolutely, execution. He was poisoned by popular demand, okay? Socrates had half the picture. Today we're going to fill in the other half. We have to look to his star student, Plato, his star student, Aristotle, to get the full picture for what it takes for human commitment.